Hi, and welcome to Let's Play a War Game. I'm Wargamer1963, and it seems to me that Windows 7 wanted to change my color scheme there for a minute. Okay, um, today's game is going to be Strike Force 1, an old SBI game that was uh, originally a board game, um, published as an introductory game to recruit new wargamers to the hobby. Um, this I have right here is a we'll be playing uh, the freeware version which is for the PC um, it also was distributed <coughs> in much the same manner as the board game to recruit new players or potential players to the wargaming hobby um, you can see it's a conventional hex encounter map game the premise is, or the scenario is, the Soviets are attacking from the east. Their goal is to capture at least two of the three yellow cities currently held by U.S. forces. The Soviets are in the brown and the U.S. are in the green. Uh, there's two values at the bottom of each counter. The leftmost is the combat strength of the unit and the rightmost is the number of movement points the unit can spend each game turn. Um, you can move some, all, or none of your units during your movement phase and each hex costs one or more movement points to enter. Um, clear costs one. I think in this version I don't have any optional rules going so um, the force are um, off limits to all units. I don't know if there's an additional cost to enter the town or not. Anyway, there's no stacking. There is zones of control where you must stop upon uh, moving adjacent to an enemy unit. Combat is voluntary um, and it uses a differential system so three units versus one unit will be three minus one for uh, plus two. Combat will be resolved on the plus two column of the combat results table. You'll roll a die and see what you get. Usually it's defender or attacker retreat um, or no effect. So, anyway, this uh, postulates uh, a period during the Cold War where the Soviets and Americans were expected to uh, engage in uh, combat somewhere in Germany. So, I have it set for human player, that's me, I'm the US, and the Soviets will be the computer player. So there are basically four phases per turn. There's the movement phase for the Soviets, the combat phase for the Soviets, movement phase for the US, and combat phase for the US. I think there's what four or six turns, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll have to check up on that. Well anyway, let's begin. See what the Soviet player decides to do. From what I can tell, he usually has a fairly scripted movement. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's his movement. He moved all six units. Um, he's lined up. These three here will get a three to three versus the one. There's going to be three minus one is going to be on a plus two column. Good chance that he can uh, force my unit to retreat here. He cannot retreat into an enemy occupied hex. An enemy hex in a zone of control, which is right here. That unit occupy uh, that unit exerts a zone of control into those hexes, and you cannot retreat into the force. So the only retreat path I will have is here. So he will push me back, and he will advance uh, if he gets the proper combat results. So let's see what happens. Defend or retreat. You can see up here that the attack strength was three, defense was a one, so that gives it on a plus two plus two column gives you a uh, one chance of uh, killing the defender one two three four chances of retreating the defender or one attacker retreat so you don't really or yeah you don't really want to roll a six so his result was a four it was a defender retreat and I have only one path to retreat and then he will advance now it is my movement phase of turn one Let's check out something here just a minute. I'm going to show the game turn track here real quick. Just going to show you that 
There's the game turn track. The yellow box indicates the current uh, <coughs> the current uh, game turn. So I have few options. Right here, he can get another two to one on me if he moves this unit up to here and attacks. Um, here he can come up to here and that could be a two to one or basically on a plus one that could be on the plus one if he wanted to he could probably get a plus one there um, I find it in my first two plays I find it best to take and protect these two cities for one it's going to take him next turn to to uh, reposition his forces once he takes this city um, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. I can abandon this city and I probably will. You notice as I highlight my unit, the screen, the hexes I can move into are highlighted in green. So, I'm going to put him there. What this does is this blocks here. This, he has his zones of control to block there. I'll probably leave this unit as it is. Um, for the moment, because I don't want him to just walk into my cities, or, you know, I don't know. Let's see how this goes. He's going to come up here and anchor the right flank, because <coughs> this guy can only go here, or he can go here. If they break through here, he'll basically do an envelopment there, so, yeah, that's kind of how that'll turn out. I could move this guy here and here. You can't go from zone of control to zone of control, but you can go out of a zone of control, then re-enter. If I do that, he can hit me here, here, and here, and still force me back here. I think I'm pretty good where I'm at. Let's see what happens. We'll advance the phase. Now, attacking at anything but two on a plus two column is a mistake so I will not attack and now the it's turn two now the Soviet player will move and attack move move oh hmm interesting he chose the open city to the north to maneuver most of his forces into and he will usually defend that city so I really shouldn't have to worry about one or two of his units for a little bit. Um, from other games, he'll try to force this unit back and down, back and down the board, um, try to encircle. So we'll see what happens. Now the combat phase. Looks like he's going to make a couple of attacks. The first attack was here. Attack was on a plus one. He rolled a six on the plus one column, getting an attacker retreat. This means that these two units will have to retreat now. Um, yes, six is attack and retreat. This was a 50-50. On the plus one table, you know, it's it's a 50% chance of you retreating uh, or the defender retreating. So, he has to retreat. Let's see where he goes. That guy goes there, and that guy has a choice of two, and he goes there. I cannot advance as a defender. Here we have another attack or retreat. He rolled on a plus one, rolled a five. You don't want to roll high on the plus one column. So he will have to retreat back. He has two options. He retreats uh, that way. Now, it's my turn. I got a threat up here. Um, hmm. Well, this is a blocking point. Let's see, what would be the best option at the moment? If I move him up there, he can only be hit by one, or he can be hit by three again. And if I move him down one, then I, oops, uh, you're supposed to go here. That acts as a unit. I think I'll put him here instead. Let's see what happens. All right, we're done with that. Now the combat phase. I will not do anything of the sort. 
Now we proceed to turn three. He has basically two movement phases and two combat phases to capture this city or this city. I could have went up here and recaptured this city, but I don't know. We'll see if that was a good good move on my part or not. So, Soviet player will move. He's shifting the axis of his attack. Hmm. Okay. Let's we'll see if he has enough uh, ability to do that. He's leaving this city alone. He owns this city. I wonder if he's going to try and push for this city. I don't think he has the time to do so, but we'll see. Who's he going to attack? Three to one on the plus two. He rolled a two, which is the defender retreat. I have only one retreat path again, and then he advances. The second attack is here on the plus one. I roll a one, defender retreats. So he got lucky that time. I can only go one way. Now I'm kind of blocked here. So He'll be blocked there, so he's not going to be able to break through this turn. So, see what I should do. Hmm. 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 I'm going to pause here for a moment while I think. Okay, we're back. Well, try something a little bit risky here, but we'll see what happens. Move him down here, and then move him here. This unit, I'm going to move, basically he'll move here, and then here is what will happen. So that gives me a line of one, two, there. You know, this guy, he can move on around, but there's no sense in doing that. He might as well stay back so that, you know, the Soviets have to push back. I think he's going to probably encircle this unit, and that'll be the battle there. But I want to kind of hold these units in place. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yes, we should in the phase. Combat phase. I do not wish to attack. All right, turn four. This is the last movement and attack phase that the Soviet player will get. So he has to get this town, and I think he'll conser concentrate all of his efforts to take this town. Moves there, moves there, defends the town up there. So he's going to do a two to one there, probably get a retreat on me. Let's we'll see what happens. Ah, he did. Luckily, I have a retreat path. So yeah, it was on a plus one, 50-50. I retreat, and he goes in there. Now I have to take the, have to take it back. So this last turn, it doesn't matter. Now I have three minus one is going to be on the plus two column. And if this guy could only have gotten out, well, there you have it. So. I'm going to attack to take this town back at uh, 3 minus 1 on the plus 2 column. So 3 minus 1 plus 2, there's a good chance that anything but a 6, anything but a 6 and I win. So, here we have it. And it's a 6. Ha ha ha. Well, there you have it. There was a 1 in 6 chance. Alright, game over. Soviet player has a unit in two cities. The Soviet player has one. Well, there you have it. Um, at the last, uh, on the last turn, I had a, an 80% chance of winning the game, and I rolled a 6. So, congratulations to the uh, computer AI on their brilliant brilliant smashing victory and that's it for this replay let's play so until next time this is wargamer1963 uh, uh, signing out